Hi everybody, this is Avicina, author of Nutrition and Hair Loss, A New Perspective. And today I'm going to be producing another video about uh, indigenous hair care versus modern hair care. Many people today who are suffering from hair loss usually end up resorting to pharmaceutical shampoos, hair loss shampoos, which you can find at any pharmacy or grocery store. And many of them uh, work to no avail. They're actually utter failures and it is for this reason why we see so many young men and women who suffer for hair loss for many years or the entirety of their lives once the process starts. Of course, you can go into any pharmacy and there's just shelves and shelves and products upon products, right? You can find all kinds of things that don't work. And I want to contrast this with the traditional world where people use natural elements, natural minerals and plants and oils from the natural world, which help them to grow waist long hair and avoid hair fall. So let's take a look at this. Uh, these are the Yao women from southern China uh, who use a natural mixture of fermented rice water and oils uh, to grow waist long hair. Let's have a look at this stuff. Is there anything special about the hair washing? Uh, yes, you know, um, the hair of the Yao ladies or girls are long, black, and bright. You may see um, what we use is the is not a normal shampoo, but we make the we made it ourselves, and that's why very ordinary in our daily life. We call it the the rice water, or the water after washing the rice. You may have a look. They will pour some in the barrel later. So you take a look at this woman's hair who's, you know, her hair is almost down to her feet and you're never going to find a woman who's using conventional shampoo who grows hair that long. It's just not going to happen. And it's because conventional shampoo and store-bought shampoos are actually poisonous to the hair. They're poisonous to the brain and the body. They have artificial ingredients and fragrances which are synthesized in the laboratory which are not compatible with human biochemistry. The water after washing the rice, they'll put it in a big barrel and boil them together with some orange skins and then, you know, keep them in a big barrel for about half a month or a month. Then after that, we use them to wash our hair. That's one example there. Now I'm going to show a few men in uh, Ethiopia. They're called the Afar men, which I find uh, to be an extremely beautiful indigenous tribe. Uh, they have great hair, very healthy, strong, happy people. And they use raw butter for their hair uh, treatment, for their scalp treatment. And uh, they grow long, beautiful curls. Uh, let's take a look at these men. And again, contrast this with modern individuals in industrialized societies who think that they are the pinnacle of human health when in fact they are probably the least healthiest individuals to ever walk the face of the planet. Modern industrialized peoples and their ideas are totally in, um, in opposition to the natural order. So that is raw butter on the man's hair, okay? Uh, the raw butter, it contains not only essential fatty acids and oils, but also vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and nearly a full spectrum of minerals, which is able to penetrate not only the hair, but also the hair follicle and the brain. Uh, and this stuff directly nourishes the scalp, brain, uh, the hair follicles and the hair. Again, you contrast this with modern shampoos which have none of these qualities at all, which actually have synthetic fragrances and synthetic chemicals which are extremely harsh to the hair. And you can see why you see so many individuals in modern industrialized nations who are balding and thinning or thinning at the crown and receding their hairlines at such a young age. It's because, again, they are not following the natural order. 
Another young man with the uh, butter in his hair. So here again, they're playing, applying raw butter directly to this young man's hair to fortify it. Okay, now let's look at one more tribe. So, these are the Himba women. Okay, the Himba women harvest, it's very difficult to pronounce, but it's O Mumbiri. Okay, it is a resin which they harvest and then mix with raw butter as well. And they apply this combination to their skin and hair, and it again protects it from the elements and contributes to healthy skin and hair. Let's take a look at these people. This is the resin, which again is very rich in minerals. They're now accumulating clay as well to mix with the resin. Some ash. Not only does the salmonberry butter protect them from the harsh environment, but it also forms part of their traditional dress. Many years ago, Dr. Stefan Hurley's work as a botanist and wildlife vet brought him to the land of the Himba and his introduction to the full yet fresh and uplifting scent of salmonberry. And so now you can't compare all this, okay? Indigenous people using natural elements from the earth, natural minerals, natural herbs, natural oils and butter, right? From Ethiopia to China. And you contrast that with these pharmaceutical shampoos which we are using, okay? And it's, it's, a, it's laughable at best. None of this stuff works. You look at the ingredients, right? Here's Nizoro, a very popular... Uh, supposedly anti hair loss shampoo and you look at the ingredients inside of here most of them you can't even pronounce none of them have any nutritional benefit to the body or to the hair none of them are from nature they're all synthesized inside of a laboratory right you can't consume any of this stuff it's poisonous if you can't consume it why would you apply it on your skin and hair the skin and hair are able to consume food directly they uh, everything you apply on the skin and hair finds its way into the bloodstream so for example here, I mean, what is fragrance number one? What is FDNC blue, right? What is qualernium 15, sodium chloride, So right? What is this stuff? This is all modern chemistry which has no benefit to the human body. So is it any wonder why we have so many people uh, thinning prematurely, balding prematurely, both men and women? 
again, it is because of the uh, inability to harmonize with the natural world, right? We're violating the natural order. Nature has given us everything to thrive and to live healthy lives. It's just a matter of aligning with it. So the takeaway from this is not that you need to copy an exact recipe from the Yao woman or for the Afar men, right? Or the Himba woman. But to use natural oils and herbs which you are drawn to. There are literally thousands and thousands of recipes which you could concoct yourself, right? You can use stinging nettle. You can use horsetail. People use kelp. People use any of the dozens of available oils. And they apply this stuff to the skin, hair, and scalp. And you can find this, these types of practices the world over. It existed everywhere in the Native American cultures of the Americas, in the traditional European herbalism, right? You can find it in Africa amongst the indigenous and primitive tribes. You can find it all throughout the Middle East, Central Asia, and uh, even Southeast Asia. It's everywhere. It is the modern world that is an anomaly and does not make sense. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe as well. If you did not like it and you are someone who simply can't comprehend the natural world, please go ahead and give it a thumbs down so I know how many of you guys are watching. I also have a link to my book in the, the comment section. The book is called Nutrition and Hair Loss, A New Perspective. And in that book, I offer my entire thesis on hair loss as well as a concise protocol on how to stop and reverse the hair loss process. I have amalgamated all of my work on hair care in that book. I think it would be of great help to any of you who are dealing with hair loss. Thank you all and I wish you have a nice day.